page three provides a map of both of the district area boundaries, and we've overlaid some of the major projects that we have planned for this area. We've categorized the projects into two separate categories. The first are the large pipe replacement projects that we have planned for this area over the next five years. The blue lines that you see there are the pipe replacement projects that we have planned. The most notable of these projects is the pipeline replacement project that we have planned for Santa Monica Boulevard. That project consists of the replacement of roughly 3,000 feet of 90-year-old pipe. It's the same section of pipe that caused the leak that we had a few weeks ago with the major disruption. It was on our radar in advance and we knew it was an issue. Given all the issues that we had recently with that section of pipe, we decided to expedite that job. And our plan is to come in in less than three years to stay and start replacing that whole stretch of pipe. So along with that section of pipe, there's three others scattered throughout the area that we've identified as sort of high risk. High deep pipes that we also want to come in and replace over the next five years. The second category of project we identified has to do with the large services, again, typically associated with the large development. All the green boxes are new large water services that we've installed either over the past six months or we plan to install over the next six months. Um, so, current and future projects, there's a pool of 12 projects just within the district area. It's a reflection, again, as you all know, of the amount of development taking place in the area. Uh, comparing this graph or this map to last year, we had three large service projects in the area. We multiplied that by a factor of four. So there's a tremendous amount of work in place here. We're doing all we can to support that. Lastly, we just wanted to list out a few ideas suggestions that we had for the committee as far as how we can assist the committee with either planning projects or just um, improving the communication between our organization and yours. The first, of course, is like I mentioned, improving the line of communication. We have a lot, a lot of large projects planned in this area over the next few years. We recognize that the construction. We like to make sure that we come out and we notify all of our stakeholders, including yourself, what the impacts are, what mitigation measures we're taking. We just want to be transparent as to what we're doing and why we're doing it. The second recommendation we had is again having to do with just being in constant communication with the committee, whether it's a large project or a small project. We just want to make sure that if you have questions about the work that we're performing, large or small, you're more than welcome to contact us. The other idea was having to do with water services. Uh, my section here. I call every single day having to do with trying to assist the contractor or developer to get their water services in place so that they can open up their building. Um, we recognize that this area is undergoing a tremendous amount of development and we're willing to expedite services if necessary. And that's another suggestion that we have to make. The fourth idea has to do with, again, just taking continuous updates or upgrades to our water system. Uh, we will continue to monitor our system. We've identified four large projects. As we conduct our investigation, <coughs> we find that we need to perform additional work in the area. We will be the first ones out here to notify you of, of the changes in the plan. The last has to do with the various <coughs> programs and review opportunities. Uh, there's a lot of questions that we get given the, the state of our water supply having to do with what we're doing with regard to water recycling. Some of the review opportunities. Again, you have our information. If you'd like to learn more about those programs, you can notify us and we can get you in contact with the right people. So, the last thing we've done is just to provide our contact information of Mr. Cole, myself, uh, my boss, Paul Batista. Like I mentioned, if there's any questions about what we do or about some of the programs that we have in the water system, we'd be more than glad to help. And, and just, I just want to make sure, too, it's nice to be at home here, and uh, we work with him on uh, the lunges, but we can see the work. But uh, Dan's obviously a very motivated guy, and all out there uh, looking out for everybody. Uh, and he does a great job of using the Department of Water Power. He, he knows who to call, who to contact, uh, so he's got a good guy there. Uh, I just want to make sure you yeah, get out. Yeah, it's kind of gross. We, we, we try our best. Yeah. So I just want to make sure.
sure you know, it is to develop it's one of our best guys um, in terms of we have, we have five different districts throughout the city of Los Angeles. Uh, it has always been uh, great in terms of turning things around very quickly for developers. Uh, he's, he's on top of it. Uh, his district that he handles, Western District, also has the highest amount of leaks. It's a very, very busy district. Uh, he's used to handle all that too. So unfortunately, the guys probably work in, I don't know what, a lot of hours uh, during the week. Um, but uh, I just want to let you know that we're, we're here to support you guys. Jesus is Bob Salmon Batista wanted to be here. Unfortunately, he had some personal business, was not able to make it. But he wanted to make sure that he had his information in here for the contacts. If you're not satisfied with the uh, support that Jesus is providing, you can work your way up to the command, essentially. Uh, we're, we're almost there. We, we want to know if things are going well for you guys and you're getting the information that we need. Uh, as Jesus also mentioned, we've seen a, a huge uptick in of uh, development here in the city of Los Angeles, not only in your district, but, but uh, throughout the city. We've seen over a 60% increase in services, service requests. Uh, we've been dealing with a lot of developers. We have huge developments out of Porter Ranch, Playa Vista is uh, picking up too. So a lot of activity going on in terms of development. So we want to be there to support you guys and, uh, and support development and business too. Uh, as you saw, also we had some breaks on uh, Sunset, Brian, uh, big one, Sunset in UCLA. Uh, it was a great wake up call in terms of recognizing the infrastructure needs that we have. Uh, there will be traffic impacts, obviously, by you doing some of these repairs and replacements, but we want to make sure we get out ahead of that and, and address uh, the worst stuff, you know, try and get on that before uh, we create the problem. Uh, I did deal with some of the business people out there on. Um, uh, at, at Highland, uh, we've had repeated incidents on that, as Jesus mentioned. Uh, we, we want to essentially get, we want, we want to respond to the hot spots. Uh, the pipes essentially tell us where we have a problem as they leak. Uh, we track all of that in a, a, a GIS system, the geographical information system. We track where all those leaks are, so we know where our problem spots are, and every year we go through a whole list of the top ones. We select those and then we start pursuing them. So our program, as you probably heard on the news, is accelerating. Uh, the mayor's put additional uh, emphasis on that with us, and we're going up to, I believe, 260,000 linear feet uh, per year is our, our target. Uh, so we are uh, staffing up to try and meet that. And uh, I just came back from some quarterly reviews that we do, uh, performance reviews that we do with our crews every quarter that we review. Uh, what their uh, costs are and what their performance is and, and how, how well they're doing. Uh, so we do a lot of tracking with our crews, we do a lot of emphasis on that, making sure that they're doing a, not only a quality job, but that we're looking out for our rate payers too in terms of uh, that they're performing appropriately. So I just want to let you guys know we're doing some cool stuff there. One last cool thing that I want to show you guys, I'm going to pass this around, I will show and tell item, is uh, the Department of Water Power was the uh, first person or first company in the United States to uh, pursue a, a new deep pipe that we're doing. It's called earthquake resistant ductile iron pipe. You might have seen something on the news, you'll be seeing more in the news in the future. But uh, we actually sent one of our guys, two of our guys, to Japan uh, and worked with a Japanese company that manufactures a specific joint uh, that's resistant to uh, pull out. Uh, it's been used in Japan for close to 40 years and uh, has essentially had 100% resistance to uh, earthquake loading, uh, liquefaction, other types of problems, landslides. Uh, so it's a little bit more expensive, has a unique coating system that's not available here in the United States. Uh, by bringing this to the United States, we're the first one who used it in uh, East Valley, actually, it was our first job. We got a second job going on right now, it started today in Reseda. Um, I went out and ran out there at Roscoe and Reseda. And, um, by pulling this here into the United States, it's essentially kind of stirred up the uh, U.S. pipe industry. Uh, got them realizing that we need business. We want something that's going to be earthquake resistant. Uh, we want to look at these new coatings because we think it's actually going to give greater life to the pipe, uh, which benefits our rate payers. And so it's a unique thing. It, it essentially allows for movement in the joint. The joint is able to move. And then it resists pull-out, but also allows the pipe to move in the lateral direction and also allows it to rotate a little bit. So by doing that, we're essentially going to be able to resist, uh, we hope we're going to be able to resist a lot more of the earthquake loading that we have here in Los Angeles. But what I want to 
Anesthesia in Roscoe, which is familiar with that area, is right by the Northridge Hospital, near the uh, uh, center of the Northridge earthquake. We're going to try and develop a, um, essentially, in critical locations, uh, start placing some of this pipe. We're looking at uh, sun, a portion of sunset, uh, because we recognize that there's some faulting potentially along uh, the sunset boulevard there. So we're, we're using this. I'm going to pass this around to you guys. Uh, but this is something that GWP is rolling out, and uh, we've got a lot of uh, a lot of interest in it nationwide. Um, City of San Francisco is doing something with it. They've got a program going now. Uh, stuff all along the West Coast, up in uh, the state of Washington. So we're very excited about that. Uh, just trying to be a little bit innovative and accomplish. But please let us know if you guys have any problems. Anybody in the business community is having some difficulties. Easy, is very responsive. Yes, sir. Going to the map that's in your handout, a great presentation, by the way. Thank you. <coughs> it's really informative. Uh, we are hoping to implement a uh, relinquishment of the state highway 2, which is currently owned by the state. As part of that, we would like, if possible, to put those. Doing this project of, of replacement, it sounds like it might be a great time to coordinate uh, if that's possible. Um, so I was hoping you could address the, the viability of putting those those old wires along the same line the <coughs> underground as you do the, the pipe. I'll have to turn my car apart. Uh, well, it would it would be something where. Uh, we wouldn't put them, we don't put them in the same trench, obviously. Uh, it, it, would be, it would be separate locations in the street. It's something that's feasible. Uh, doing it at the same time, when you guys want to. Yeah, it may be a little challenging in terms of <coughs> going out the street, trying to share the street. The same yeah, time. I don't know if it's possible. It's really a matter of time on the same basic time frame. When are you guys looking to? Uh, well, we're working on relinquishment. So if, we're, if, we're, if all goes well, uh, I, I don't want to hazard a guess because we're dealing with the state of California and the city and, and the assembly, and so there are a lot of uh, different agencies and practices right. involved. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but if, if I think it would be easy to go in and say GWP would, would be amenable to a project with this nature that it would want to bolster our efforts to expedite. Um, but I, I don't want to know how long it will take. Uh, I do know we, we talked with um, Mayor Garcetti, we've talked with uh, our assemblyman, uh, we've talked uh, obviously with CD4, and we're in a lot of support to, to do this. Um, we'll, in a year or two, it seems like you might be in line with, with this one.
about a million dollars a month. Um, that's, that's a single surgery. Right? Right. Multiple ducts, obviously, when we're doing the duct work, we would put it all in one time. Uh, the multiple, depending on the, the number of circuits, you know, if I'm completely doing it all the way down to the secondary level, we've got to run one and two each.
you want to see what we can do to coordinate on that. Down the second one, you did do it. You put two trenches. One I down here, then you came back and you put another one down the next year. And then after that, you came down and did the final concrete. So we do thank you for the final. And it depends on the situation, what the circumstances are, and all that stuff. But obviously, I mean, we do our best to try not to do that. Uh, back to the, uh, 2017 pipe replacement. Uh, Project. I just wanted to be clear that uh, your intention, whether or not uh, we do the undergrounding, was that you close half the street off. In other words, we have two lanes. Is that is that how it's, it would progress? For just the water project that we have in plan, we would shut down two lanes. If there's an opportunity for us to coordinate with the power system and pull that work in, we would like to the additional space. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, which which might mean the whole street. That's I think what I heard. At the whole street. Uh, the whole street is that had to do with the Hutchinson job near Holmes Bakery. In, in that area, it was a red residential street. Uh, when we were able to shut it down and complete all the work. A complete shutdown of Santa Monica would be very annoying. So that, well, that's and not sure. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's not our wide street, though. For us, we need to possibly shut down.
and less than a few months in the new period. And Hollywood uh, at Highland, between Highland and North, will be closed starting Saturday morning, actually Friday night at midnight, while they construct the stage so that this could wonder and others have a place to respond. So, uh, yeah, that's, that, that's sort of what the main things I wanted to um, focus on here. Does anybody have any questions for me? I don't know if we've already spoken about it. We tried to put up the theater of science ourselves. To the gallons, I know. And I think the reason they were denied before is because, you know, I'll be very frank with all of you all in the room. I think the, uh, I understand why they are the way they are. Because normally they govern highways. Um, the top range rules, when, when, when the highway is basically a city street like this, the same amount of rules are, um, are a little Byzantine. So um, they were denied before. I think they, the design has been amended. They were denied before because it said Theater Row, um, which is, of course, the thing that we're working on. These are like the city signs and the seal and blah, blah, blah. But um, I believe the design has been amended, so now it's just an image. So, um, well, if we put the city logo on the heart that says Theater Row, would that overcome the objection? I don't, th I don't think that part of it actually matters. I, I, I really don't. I don't know for sure. Um, what I can tell you is that uh, I talked to the assembly member's office, assembly member who I'm trying to them about it. They pledged uh, whatever help we need. So if we need to really push that, I mean, I think it would be a really nice aesthetic improvement. And enough, you know, once we can get these four normally really simple little signs off the ground, right. you know, normally we would just introduce a motion to give you the like $100 or $200, and we call it a day. Uh, it's more complicated because they have an approach to the permit process and it's you know, really boring and bureaucratic. But they are going to happen. Um, and then we can focus on the general. That's something that I would like to focus on. But I looked at the images and they're really nice. They're worth putting up. And I think it would be a uh, you know, tremendous boon for not just the artistic community, for everybody to say. So I, that is something I'd like to know about. Definitely. Figure out a way that we can get them up um, and not have them be denied again by them. Are there city signs? You, you mentioned uh, Santa Monica and the Academy. Did you say all four will be there? Or are you no, so there will be basically there will be two eastbound. If you're headed eastbound, so like, you know, I'm driving along and I you now enter Theater Row and I cross the Academy. Mm -hmm. And then there will be one in that, like at that intersection basically. Mm -hmm. So you can see, so the eastbound traffic, you can see it. And then continuing further east, there will be one at Bill Cox, so well, he's going to east down. So it's like on the south side of the street. And then there will be two for westbound traffic. Yeah. One at all central Well, thank you. Okay, good. Over here. My English for you, too. But I'm very Absolutely. All my members are on there, are on here, including the cell. So please feel free to give Tom a call at any time. I uh, am available 23-6, let's say that. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I hope everyone has a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Okay. Um, why don't we take a minute to read the minutes?
was established by Vegan Projects, uh, which is probably the foremost contemporary gallery in Los Angeles, uh, which moved uh, over to uh, Highland in Santa Monica, on Santa Monica, just, just east of Highland, um, about two years ago. And now there are over a dozen of the top contemporary art galleries and um, and uh, non-profit art organizations all look at the team a bit. And that's up from, I believe, zero about four years ago. Uh, so, and there's many more coming. So the Hollywood video, you know, the Hollywood media district is really uh, now and more and more going to be known as the world destination for contemporary art. Um, which we find very exciting, hopefully all the other stakeholders who did find exciting. And um, as both a business owner and property owner, I thought it would be a great opportunity to contribute my own nonprofit and for-profit board experience to just contribute towards further uh, developing the district in a positive and sustainable way um, that we're very invested in. And to connect the, uh, especially to connect the uh, community of contemporary arts proprietors uh, to the bid board. And you can see why we were uh, pretty impressed with uh, the candidates we had. So thank you for that. And, and uh, I think at this point we need to ask you guys to step outside uh, while we uh, take our, our discussion. Unless everybody has questions for them before they go. Thank you. 
so we can uh, trust out on number six and we go to our very patient. Uh,
Um, so we'll, you know, we don't know if you have maybe some injuries on you. And the LAPD came real fast because the call they received is that someone getting robbed. The individual in that vehicle came straight to one of my supervisors and told him that four guys tried to jump in that vehicle and stole the wallet, some uh, iPhone, and a laptop they had. And they were trying to get more stuff in that vehicle. And then the investigation that, that was set. The female was not actually hit. She did it on purpose for the vehicle stop while the other individual jumped in. Once that the reason they all ran is because they saw the creatures coming in. And to the story of that, we found one of the suspects, LAPD did detain him, and he gave the whole story. So the female had been going to jail too. So the victim in that case was a gentleman um, that sent him a nice email saying thank you for assisting, but he was scared because he's not from around here from West Hollywood. He was just coming to drive by around here, and he said he sees it all the time, but he never thought that we were there for that kind of assistance to assist the neighborhood. Uh, last and least, I received an interesting call from Sacramento BSDS. That's the one that actually holds the license for anything, um, especially for security. He's an investigator uh, following up a complaint that was on YouTube uh, or Taylor. He uh, had a couple questions for me, but he actually ended up saying that he sees no floor or play in that video. He has not seen anything wrong with her, also what he did. And as a matter of fact, um, he said once he finished that uh, investigation, he just emailed me and, and my, uh, my superiors that I will go ahead and work on that. I will at least know it's but he unfortunately does not see it because it was part of the VIP. We did not go ahead and threaten anybody, we did not detain anyone. So he just committed my officers. So I want to follow up with that. I still have to follow up with that way for the email back to the next time. But uh, that's my report for this. Thank you. Thank you.
also thank Jim uh, for all the coordination throughout that process and the day of meeting. Uh, I am so excited about what's happening and the stuff that's been going on the last couple of months. Um, I'll start with the uh, homeless committee that I attended. Uh, the great news to report the synergy of local, state, and federal agencies in concert with our local service agencies and host of dedicated volunteers have truly made a difference in getting some of our beloved homeless brothers and sisters current and homes. According to the report given Monday, October 27th by Hollywood Forward, they have permanently housed 368 persons since 2010 and 75 this year. It's important that we continue to support those that are engaged in working to create solutions to the issues of homelessness. It affects all of us. It appears the date of the count uh, for the Hollywood area will be January the 29th, and I encourage all of you to sign up and participate. Um, please let me know if you're interested, and I want to make sure you get the notice. Uh, I attended an economic development <coughs> committee meeting at City Hall. I have to say it wasn't that productive. It's not really to report. Uh, the next meeting I attended was the ad hoc committee on the same day for the film and television production jobs. I was really impressed with the work of council members Paul McCory and Kern Price and council member Mitchell Farrell. This committee has direction and focus. With the passage of AB 1839, this committee focused on what can be done on a local level to reduce impediments to filming. We heard from several departments on ways to make this happen. First was the housing department. City staff provided a little report on city owned properties. The list is critical for filming and for residents, uh, for filming and for residents in our local neighborhoods. Properties can be for production based change. Utilizing these spaces will help alleviate parking issues associated with crews filming in our neighborhoods. Uh, they came up with a preliminary list of 30 sites, and Film LA, a conduit for filming applicants, is now taking tours of these properties so that it has a working knowledge of what's available and can best assist production companies. <clears throat> the next uh, report came from the Department of Recreation and Parks. The city is hiring new staff that will serve as film ambassadors for the department and home production companies have a smooth experience at local facilities. Since film permits are funding for these positions, they will not impact the city funding. The Department of Transportation uh, reports uh, Council Member Farrell is working with the staff to address parking restrictions in the neighborhood. In many cases, the temporary parking signs do not match the hours <coughs> for a film permit, thus, they take up parking when it's not necessarily needed. Uh, for example, the sign might restrict parking until 10 p.m., but the production wrap at 4 p.m. Uh, the other report was from the Department of Board of Power. The studios are paid, this is an interest in any of you, at least 30% more in utilities than most commercial customers due to policy that was approved before Council Member took office, Council Member Farrell. Uh, he says that this is not fair to business, and he's asked the department to report back to see how they can restructure those fees. I also discussed this with uh, Rajiv this morning, uh, who the uh, director and deputy films are, and so he kind of informed me of uh, how that he is structured, and, and that they also, too, are teaming up with the city to uh, hopefully put pressure on the DWP to restructure those fees. Uh, and if you want to talk to those individuals, I can put them in touch with them. Uh, as, as Simon mentioned, uh, the Los Angeles Gay and Lesbian Center had community meetings, very productive, both the co-captains of the Hollywood Division, as well as the local security guys from the Red School House. Our security team were in attendance and talked about collaboration, and I understand there's some really cool things that, uh, that the center is doing to kind of uh, merge and um, help neighbors meet neighbors, which is, there was a mural project, I believe, that the students at the Red School House participated at the Youth Center, and then the Youth Center, uh, during the uh, Halloween, annual Halloween parade by the Little Red School House, they go around the block. The youth center stood outside and impacted the cheerleaders. So I love that kind of collaboration and, and neighborly action. So thank you very much for that. Um, I was invited to represent the Hollywood Media District at the Hollywood Los Angeles Kiwanis Club Veterans Day Luncheon. It was a great opportunity to honor veterans and show gratitude for their service and sacrifice. You may ask why this is important for the bid. I will be building consensus and goodwill. This club in particular does a lot of service work and is constantly partnering with the local community on their initiatives such as cleanups, etc. Um, there also was a Hollywood Executive Directors Forum. This is a group that's uh, started by Linda Horner. Um, and the purpose of this is to see how, um, to, to discuss common challenges and solutions. And 
and going forward, the work will center on collaboration, including shared resources, support, and more development and fundraising. Uh, I met with Vince Gleason, the policy director and council member for Joe Boscaino. We discussed sidewalk repair ideas and the current legislation. I communicated the bid's strong desire to need to get our sidewalks fixed. He is offered to come speak at an upcoming meeting with various plans that are floating about. Uh, so, as was mentioned by Joseph at the nomination committee, um, they would like to do some repairs at their side. And so I communicated that to Dennis, and uh, he mentioned several ways that we're looking at uh, for the city to relieve fees to make it more attractive for business to make repairs if they would like to do so for the city gets around to it. A little discussion about the road, the guidance and meeting. Um, I, I, I don't, I'm not sure where this committee fits in, but I know it's, uh, it's happening. Theater Road Committee, separate from Stay in Live. Uh, I was encouraged by the momentum and focus of the group. I was able to inform them the progress is being made once again and the project is moving forward. Uh, wayfinding signage and medallions. Uh, I scheduled a meeting with the team for Trawler, Mayor, and Associates to be briefed on the project and identify the roadblocks and resources needed to get this back on track. So, one of the things that was mentioned. Um, Caltrans does allow us to put up the medallions with Theater Row, which I think was originally on the first design, the vertical Theater Row. Uh, then we can alleviate that to go ahead and get them up and move the project forward. And at some time when we have relinquishment, the city would allow us to put the Theater Row back on them. So frustrating, but maybe that's the way forward. It's kind of a simple fix and kind of a little um, sacrifice. Chamber Legislative Meeting, uh, they, there's a lot of activities going on. Uh, Regarding community meetings, the CD4 forum. Please see me if you want additional details on those events. I also attended and uh, represented the media district in support of the Hollywood Museum Sentinel Exhibition of Tyrell Power. Uh, they do wonderful work in promoting Hollywood and our rich history. Chamber Economic Development Committee, the committee has decided uh, in order to be more effective, we need to expand our efforts to include business and job attraction through collaboration, presentation, and data collection. And uh, I mentioned that uh, over the next couple months, from one to six months, I'm going to really focus hard on making sure that we have really good data about our area. Uh, that was also kind of re-emphasized by meeting this morning with the director and deputy film star, Rajiv Dalla. I'm sure he was aware of it and our desire to be visible and to participate in advocacy opportunities. We discussed several ways in which we can collaborate on the importance of data collection. It's really important for advocacy, marketing, promotion, and of desirable things and new business for our area. Uh, I'll go over these three that have uh, been touched on, but just to let you know. Um, really, which my goal, San Juan Boulevard. I met with Deputy Ian Owens and Engineer Sharon Grossman at the City of West Hollywood to inquire about their relinquishment process. I asked how they were able to bury the power lines and completely redevelop San Juan Boulevard and discuss the various funding sources. Sharon was very generous with her time, and uh, and she is agreed to attend an upcoming meeting with me and Council Member O'Farrell's office uh, beginning of December. So, as Dan mentioned, I, I disagree with the Council office currently and, and just kind of letting Caltrain spend money on this project because I believe it's throwing money on that plan. And I'll tell you why. My, when I heard that they were going to put you know, essentially two inches of asphalt, uh, I know exactly what to mention today is that within a month's time, two months' time, the same thing will happen throughout the boulevard, which is happening in Wilcox and San Juan, a perfect example. So those red buses, those extended buses, which we all love and we're glad to hear, are overweight. I think they exceed the, the legal limit. And um, so the street is not set up to handle that. The infrastructure doesn't handle that weight. So if they pave it, it's just going to be a substandard product, product that we get back when we do have a um, and as we heard today, burying the power lines isn't as difficult and impossible as people make it sound. So Sharon told me that they're going to Caltrans, and of course when they approach Caltrans, Caltrans says, no, 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 we're going to, in West Hollywood, we're going to make some repairs. And they said, please don't make the repairs. You're going to give us a substandard street. You're not, be, you're not even addressing the curbs and the gutters. Uh, so please give us that money that you're going to spend. We'll take responsibility. We'll pull that money into our budget and we'll do this thing right from the ground up. So essentially what they did was that they took a year, they, they got everybody on board, the gas, the electric, uh, the telecom companies, cable companies, and they mapped out the plan, and as you know, it was a period of inconvenience, but look what happened. I, I, and over some time, I'm 
going to get the numbers of how it benefited property owners and the retail department. Um, we all see it visually, but I'm trying to get the, the, the numbers so that I can pass it on to you guys. So it can be done. Sharon's is willing to share how they did it and their negotiating strategy with Caltrans. So I want her to go with me to Council Member O'Farrell's office to talk about that because we know it's possible. Um, master property list, uh, there's good news. We have ordered all computers and software and we should have it in by next week. It'll take probably another week to get everything up and running and going. And so then I will start mapping out my plan to go and knock on every parcel for uh, or every business within our, our district and hopefully meet as many people as I can. I'll let you guys know how many I was able to achieve each month in my report. And uh, hopefully at that time, uh, people will become a little more ready to participate in our surveys and uh, board of committees. Uh, last but not least, board development, committee selection, strategic planning. We've decided that due to your busy schedules and my being new to the board, that we're going to get, we're going to pick that work up in the beginning of the new year. Uh, you guys know about, uh, under my casework, I have the LA, LADWP motor main break that was prepared. Thank you for those guys for their report. Uh, we had a second public records request from Adrian Riskin. We've responded to that. Um, there'll be a follow-up to that uh, this week. And I also want to let everybody know that um, I'm out and about as much as possible you can do for my report. I attended two live local theatrical performances. And I also took the council member out for an evening in our area. So we spent some time at night going to some local establishments. Uh, I also met with uh, a gentleman named Peter Page. He's one of the creators, uh, writers, directors of um, The Fosters, which is on ABC. I just met with Warner Brothers. Why would I meet with him? He lives in the district, and I want him to know and get the word out that you know, we're open for business. We want production here. Uh, if he knows that anybody who's wanting to do business, whether it's retail or production, to turn them off to us and kind of spread the word. I learned from that meeting that he also has written several plays. So I'm hopeful he can get uh, involved also in theater row. And I just, I just, uh, I'm, I'm loving what I'm doing. Thank you guys for giving me the opportunity to do this. And uh, I'm hoping for any questions. Oh, one more thing, collections. Send an email off to Senator McKinney De Leon's office because there's several state properties in our area. I know it's been a challenge collecting. I don't know if I'll be successful, but I'm taking this down there. That's it.
three or four months, you're consuming too much low grade. So the studios are being penalized by a system um, where the, the performa is really set for businesses that have an even consumption, where you know, the fluctuations aren't that great. And that's really what the studios have been trying to deal with for the past few minutes, for as long as I know, 10, 15 years, I've, I've just been going meeting after meeting after meeting, some of which were with the general manager of the GWP. And they were very good results, not going to change, obviously, because they're making too much money from us. And why would they change something that would reduce the income that they're getting? So that's, uh, that's really what they're trying to do, is to get rid of that on-demand procedures, because it really isn't, um, it's not representative of what the consumption is. And what we're driving at is that we're a production, we produce product, we produce it for the industry. Shouldn't we be eligible the same way with our rates? Because our rates are determined not the same as their rates, but our rates are in a different way. And I can't define exactly what that is. But if the city is going to become more friendly to businesses, maybe there should be some consideration within the industry and the support companies also. Number two, um, we did battle to DWP when they were in our area on Sycamore a few years ago by putting, they put two water lines down Sycamore and around the corner, their electrical division was putting in power and neither one knew what the other one was doing. And what I would say to you is you go down and you actually coordinate each of the departments, you bring them into one room, and you face them off against each other. So what the water group's doing and what the electrical group's doing and what the administrative group's doing and what the uh, building safety group is doing, they don't all communicate and they don't all know what everything's going on. So you got to bring them all into the same room. So if Councilman Farrell is going to try to organize this, make sure that all fact, all different departments are represented at that meeting. And they might all look at each other and say, mm -hmm. I don't know that. Okay. Agreed. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. And reminder, the next meeting is uh, Monday, December 15th. Uh, We have a problem on Romaine. It's not the problem. Um, yeah. And it does impact even what you were saying the heart issue. It's yeah. becoming a part of the part of the district. So we have a big event in uh, the first week of December for just one on, which is an international heart dealer, huge, huge people. And this is a huge big event. Uh, we're spending a couple hundred thousand dollars. Um, and it's closed. It's going to be closed for the demolition of the plating factory, which burned down suspiciously a few months ago. And it's good that it's being replaced, but they're closing off for May. Okay? And we have, that first week, hundreds of people coming to this event. It's a permanent event. And I don't know, uh, maybe Mike, maybe you know, we've seen what's going on with their big block impacting that event, which is good for the art community, it's good for the district, it's good for our tenant as well. So I want to know if there's something we can do. This is a huge event. It sounds like you like Hollywood. This is a huge Hollywood event. It's great for the it's going to get great media coverage. It will be on TV, it will be on the news. And the plan is to say that the domain will be closed by the and we need an open
you and I should talk afterwards, and we should call the um, council office and, and um, building and safety together. You know, we need that. Sure. Dave, let me ask you a question. Is the environmental EPA doing the, I think they're working with them to do it, okay? Because it is part of the eradication of all of the toxins right. that you see coming out there every color. See, I don't know whether it's a state issue or a city issue, but it, it's about the, clean, the cleaning up of the site. Yeah. And if they've got their own calendar, it's, I would be privately done. It's being privately done. I can't remember the guy's name. But some agency is coordinating. It's so coordinating with the agency. They don't need to take that. They don't need to take that and, and have that impact on our They may have an arbitrary date or maybe a reason why. I don't know the mission, so we can find out all yeah, that. Yeah, really is, is there a new owner to the piece? Yes, he closed. So they did close? He, he, he closed, there was, uh, it was done through the bankruptcy court order, okay. and then there was a bidding process, and then there was a dispute process, and now he closed. Did you know who that is? Uh, his name? Yeah, I have it. I have it in my office. I, I spoke to him. I spoke to him. It's not CIA. <laughs> but he's a local local developer. I've got it. Anything else? Yes. Um, I think it's great that Steve's going to be walking around and getting to know all of the stakeholders. Um, it might be helpful if we, uh, if we thought about basic sort of questionnaire, some of the things that we might want to know from, it's a wonderful opportunity to gather a lot of information at one time. Um, so we might think about some of the things that we all would like to know about each other um, and our thoughts uh, before Steve undertakes this you know, massive canvassing project. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I, I would really like for a committee uh, to meet beforehand so that we can come up with, with a survey. I, I have some files that Jim will give me from, I guess you guys considered this at one point. So we'd like to bring that to the you and see if we can use some of the what do you think we'd like to add to it? I think uh, uh, Joseph had some ideas on that as well. Because there's obviously a variety of types of businesses here. Some issues will be important to some and not to others. Mm -hmm. But I think that right. You're in that uh, contact that we should glean as much as possible. Mm -hmm. We have the least of which is who are you and who owns your property and how do we get into yeah. it? Yeah. Sounds like we're going to have a lot of committee meetings in the year. Since I was going around, maybe you can't do this already, but it could also be an opportunity to bring a few copies of the enforcement and uh, paint out agreement. Because right Recently, I tried to go on the website to download those, and there's actually, there seems to be a way to do that on the website. When you um, say paint out agreement for the two agreements, in order to take advantage of the bid services, there's two agreements that need to be signed. But the property owner, neither of them seem to be available for download on the website. But even if they were, I think a lot of the business owners don't know that they exist. Mm -hmm. So if you went around with copies of those, I think it would really concretize for the people what the big can do for them. That can also be the, the, the non-trespass right. 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 That's the enforcement. Yeah. 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 It's the same thing. Yeah. Uh, Guys, that would be the issue. I'm, you're, you're welcome to stay. I need to adjourn. Uh, this has been a great meeting. Another great report. Welcome to our new board members. Uh, thank you all for, for coming. And our next meeting is uh, December 15th.